uh, hi everyone and welcome back so let's take a look on next set of uh, react interview questions and uh, here we are so how do we memorize a component so before 16.6 .6, we were using this library uh, to memorize a component which is preventing the re-rendering of a re-rendering of a component until unless uh, props is getting changed but now that is coming as a feature react.memo react.memo uh, considers like a higher order component what it does is it prevent unnecessary rendering of a child component without changing the props if the same props are coming then it will not it will not re-render the component even if the parent component is re-rendering how do you implement a server side rendering so currently we have this framework next.js which is implemented with the help of react and it provides a server side rendering but without next.js you can use react dom server dot render to a string to render the markup of a component from the server side with the help of uh, node.js express how do you enable the production mode in react i mean if we are using create react app then it always enables these production or development level debugging because it internally uses a webpack okay and whenever you do the npm run build it always create a production grade build so what is create react app and its benefit so create react app is a command line tool which is helping us to create a project it's like angular cli view cli create react app is helping us to create a skeleton of the basic application it ha it is creating a skeleton with the help of babel webpack and all these things so you don't need to write configuration you can focus more on writing the react components okay so it includes everything it gives you all the framework using which you can compile css you can write es6 code you can write uh, es6 plus ex es7 features to write your component class based component functional component and all what are the life cycle methods uh, when we are mounting so it's a constructor get derived state from props render and component did mount i'm talking about the latest life cycle methods earlier there there was like constructor component will mount render component did mount and then component will unmount but initialization methods these are four are covered uh, constructor component will mount render component did mount that is older version but now the latest version covers constructor get derived state from props and component uh, did update component did mount sorry what are the lifecycle methods going to be deprecate in v16 so component will mount component will receive props and component will update you can still use them just by putting unsafe underscore but they will be deprecated uh, in v17 and in v17 they will not be available i think but you can use them uh, with the unsafe i will suggest that you can just move to uh, the latest uh, lifecycle methods instead of using component will mount component will receive props and component will update what is the purpose of get derived state from props lifecycle methods okay this this is very important question because this is something which has replaced a lot of other methods right so the new this is a static method get derived state from props from the name what you can understand is it is deriving the state from the props okay so this is the method which will return the state from this so whatever you are returning that will be considered as a state object it's a life cycle method which is invoked after component is initiated as well as before component is getting re-rendered so it is like go going to be executed many times it can return the object to update state or just null okay so what it is doing is it is returning uh it is deriving the state from the props and props you are receiving from the parent component okay so this life cycle methods along with component did update covers all the use cases of component will receive props earlier we were having component will receive props that which that was also doing the same thing it is receiving the props from the parent component checking if the props had changed then it it you can trigger the state update in the child component same thing 
uh, is being uh, done by get derived state from props here we are deriving the state based on the props which we are receiving what is the purpose of get snapshot before update this gets executed just before we actually apply the, the changes dom updates on to the ui so it has a previous props and previous state so you can see what all changes we are going to apply so this lifecycle methods along with did update uh, covers all the use cases of component will update what is the recommended way of naming components uh, always use uh, always use a uh, knee case sorry uh, uppercase for writing the component names what is the recommended ordering of methods in a component so uh, first of all all static methods then constructor then child context and component will mount did mount receive props the same methods like this is first initialization methods then update methods then unmount finally what is switching component uh, okay a switching component is a component that renders one of many components we need to use object or map props values to the component okay let me just see what it is doing is okay there are there are a lot of components here and we are just deciding based on the condition props to page so there are many com many component right i mean it's not a particular interview question it's just a, a strategy when you wanted to render a particular component based on the props props dot page name if it is service contact home about it will just change the component page name based on the props why we need to pass a function to the set state okay so people people are not familiar with okay set state is asynchronous it has a callback so set state the exact mechanism of writing set state is something like this you should always access the previous state and return the new state and also there is a callback also in the set state once the set state method is done you can write a callback that callback will get executed once the state has been updated sometimes what you want is you are writing this dot set state in the next line you wanted to access the current state updated state that code you can execute in the callback of set state so if you try to do this assume like current state is zero and here here you are updating the state something like this your current state is still one why not three because uh set state is asynchronous and it will take time and here you are trying to access it which is synchronous way so you should always access the updated state value inside a callback okay so if you are doing something like this this dot state dot count will be three as expected okay so this is important one you should look into it and uh, first of all a uh, simple question is set state is asynchronous or asynchronous asynchronous then why it is asynchronous because set state uh, does a lot of things in the reconciliation process so it is designed as asynchronous react may patch multiple set state call into a single update for performance because this dot props this dot state may be updated asynchronously so here you can see the the counter example will fail to update this as expected why because here we are updating the state based on the current state this is not the right way to access the current state the correct way to access the current state is pass the the current state previous state in the, as an argument write a callback function and access the current state from the previous state dot counter and props dot increment so it will give us the exact picture and it will never go wrong if you are updating the state okay this is the preferable approach to call set state with a function rather than a direct an object most of the people while writing the the react components updating the state they just try directly do this dot set state and return an object based on the current state so always do it this way just write a callback which takes two argument a previous state and the props and based on the previous state previous state means what the current state of the object now you are updating the state so that will become the previous state for this function what is a strict mode strict mode is a useful for component highlighting the potential problems it does the additional checks when you are putting a strict mode for the component wrapper react mixins not uh, so important why is, is mounted an anti-pattern 
and what the what is the proper solution so what we are doing is this we are trying to check if component is mounted then only do the this dot set state the primary use of is mounted to avoid calling set state after a component has been unmounted so we, we are always checking is okay call this dot set state only if component exists on the dom node okay the optimal solution is to find a place where set state might be so i mean what we can do is uh, I mean, there is no particular solution of this uh, question. The optimal solution is to find a place where set state might be called after a component has unmounted. Okay. Uh, I mean, why should component names start with capital letters? I mean, if you try to create a JSX tag with a small letter for a component name, it will not be React will not be able to identify the 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 component definition so even if you are putting the class name in the small case while you are declaring or importing you should use the upper case for it are custom dom attribute supported in the v6 yes in react uses to ignore a non dom attribute if you wrote jsx with an attribute that react doesn't recognize react would just skip all these things like this custom attribute react will ignore it okay what is the difference between constructor and get initial state now we should stop talking about es5 way of writing component get initial state is a method which was being used in es5 react code to initialize the state and constructor is a es6 class concept too which can be used to initialize the state or initialize uh, your constructor data can you force a component to re-render yes component dot force update is there what is the difference between super and super props this we have already discussed if you are putting super with the props then only you will be able to access props inside a constructor if you are putting super empty without props then in the constructor you would not be able to access the props how to loop inside jsx you can just put inside a single parenthesis items dot map and map is always returns the new array and inside i mean well whenever we are writing jsx jsx can be an array of indices and every index is having a jsx tag and react would be able to render it so item dot map this whole segment is nothing but an array but react is able to compile it successfully you here what we are returning is we are returning the array index and every index is having this child component but here we can't do this you will not be able to do it because this is a javascript and we can't put it like this inside jsx and this is the for loop it's not returning anything it's not creating any kind of an array how do you access props in the attribute quotes uh, i mean you can just use it something like this this dot props dot image i mean you can use backticks and use dollar symbol for the dynamic values what is react prop, prop type so prop type is for prop property validation props validation which we are receiving from the parent component because a prop property can be of type string number boolean function object and we can specify okay this property is required this is optional this is of type object this is of type string boolean how to conditionally apply a class attribute you can also use a so what we are doing here is we are simply just checking this is the class plus we are adding the uh, another class based on this ternary condition what is the difference between react and react dom so react packages contains uh, these apis react.create element react.component react.children react dom has the other apis which are react dom.render react dom.render to string so react dom specifically helps us to render a component react helps us to create the component how to use a react label element so you can just use a label just the only thing is you can't use a for as a property you have to replace for with html4 same as class with the class names because for is a keyword in javascript how do you compile combine multiple inline styles something like this you can just create an array and array indexes how do you re-render the view when browser is resized so you can actually add a listener you can register a listener on the did mount and you can unregister in component will unmount so whenever you resize this dot update dimensions will be called and you will capture the updated inner width or inner height 
difference between set state and replace state methods replace state we mostly know we are not using it we mostly use set state when you set state the current state and previous states are merged replace state throws out the current state and replace it with whatever you are providing in the set replace state parenthesis so set state whatever the attribute you are passing in the set state it will merge that with the existing object state object but when you are saying replace state you have the five six properties in the state in the replace state you are passing only two so it will replace all six with the two how do to listen to a state changes you can just use component did update or uh, these methods or you can also use uh, use effect hook in functional component to just listen for any state change happening what is the recommended approach of uh, removing an array element in the react state you can uh, use array dot filter so array dot filter will always returns the the new array without modifying the existing state so always use the immutable data structures like in array we have a filter map object dot assign spread operators which are not updating the existing state returning the new object and then you assign it to the state is it possible to use react without rendering html yes you can render false null empty array react dot fragment something like this this was not allowed earlier but now you can do returning undefined won't work that is specific how to pretty json with the uh, react this is common with javascript you can just do react dot stringify your object null and you can just pass this argument too so it will just prettyfy the json you are returning okay uh, that that's it guys i might cover one more video because these are like random questions and these are like very helpful questions which you can just go through i will just add a link these questions are from react redux uh, uh, a lot of about the react hooks like use state use effect use reducers use context context apis what is redux how redux helps in managing the state what is the use reducer how use reducers and use context apis works what is recoil js okay older structure naming conventions how to make an api call how to render a props okay how to create a single page application in react using the router you can use browser router hash router memory router okay how you create a higher order component i mean how you provide a router props inside any component just by wrapping it with 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 router so that you can access uh props like here we are creating the with router so i'm able to access the history apis in any random component okay what is react router dom it's a routing library to create a single page application how to access a query parameter how you get uh, how to create a single page applications and routes how to create a public route private routes okay how to pass a data in the routes how to pass a query parameter route parameter in the, the data how to implement a not found page okay so i will cover few questions important questions about react interview questions in the next video uh, thanks everyone thanks for watching